I felt like doing some drawing. And uh, so I went and bought myself a, a pen. Um, <laughs> and it's an interesting pen. Uh, I was introduced to this pen uh, probably a couple of years ago by a friend. And she had one and she used it for some urban sketching. And, well, I went down to the bookmark, my local friendly bookstore, where I get most of my inks and stationery and some of my pens. And they had this in stock. Um, it's inexpensive. Uh and it's an interesting pen. What it is, is a sailor. Um, you know, sa sailor is known to most people in the fountain pen world as a, you know, one of the top J Japanese manufacturers of fountain pens and usually high end, you know, exotic, colorful, you know, gold nibbed fountain pens. But this is from their, uh, and th but they do have in more inexpensive pens. And, um, this is one of their sketch pens. And what it is, is a cobalt green Fude, Fude de Man. Manon? Manon. And, uh, it's actually, uh, interesting. It comes in a blister pack. All the information on it is in Japanese. The only thing that lets you know that it's a sailor is, of course, the sailor name and the sailor anchor. Um, there's some diagrams showing you how to use the pen. There's, uh, just right here, there's a little, um, you know, uh, I think it's just showing you the angle that you can hold the pen at to get different line widths. Um, and at the back, all again, I'm assuming that's in Japanese. And so we're going to take a look at this. And yes, yeah, so I got this at the bookmark. Um, I'm all I'm a picture framer and I'm an artist and I I enjoy drawing and uh I use my fountain pens sometimes for drawing and the cat's here of course she knows that I'm about to unbottle ink <laughs> anyway that's her favorite thing so it comes in a blister pack um and it's this is cobalt green I believe there's a black version of this pen too I could be wrong um let me know in the comments, but I believe there is a black one. So what you get is actually a fairly large looking pen. Um, there's no clip, but there is a little stop right there so it doesn't roll away on you. On the uh, cap, it says Sailor, uh, Japan. It uh, When I hold it, it feels like a not a high-end plastic but uh you know and it's not even it's it feels like a plastic just it you know, uh it's an art it's an art tool so it's not the highest quality material but it's actually kind of an interesting looking pen it's uh very torpedo shaped in some ways there it is a black plastic finial on and uh black plastic piece at the end kind of you know uh curved and bullet shaped um the bands not too sure what the bands are made of they look like plastic and it's a screw cap and inside you get a very large <laughs> well i'm not gonna say i guess it's, you could say that's large nib i don't know if you can see that properly and it's a few day nib or as some people refer to it as a bent nib um, so the tip of the nib turns upwards now the idea being um how you choose to hand hold the pen against your paper will result in a thicker line um, I'm just shaking it to see what's inside. <laughs> so unscrew this, this plastic section, plastic feed. Oh, and it comes with two Sailor uh, cartridges. I'm assuming they're black. They kind of look black. But um, I'm going to use a converter. Uh, and I have a Sailor converter here. And that seems to fit. Good. Now... What I'm going to do is, is quickly look at um, 
back in April, I did a light fast test on some inks that I had. I've, I've posted about this a couple times, and it's really interesting what has occurred. Um, like I had tried Oxford Blue, Black Swan, Ancient Copper, Carbon Black, and Walnut. So that's the Oxford Blue here. That's diamine, and the Ancient Copper is diamine. The Carbon Black is the Platinum Carbon Black, and the other ones are Noodlers. Now, the diamine did actually pretty much what I expected them to do, and that is fade fairly fairly substantially in, in the case of the Oxford Blue. The ancient copper sort of turned into a golden ochre color, quite different from the original color. Um, now, I expected them to do that. Um, they're great fountain pen inks, among my favorite brands, but, you know, they're designed for writing letters and cards and journaling with, so they're closed up in a book. They're not exposed to light. They're not going to fade. Uh, this I had done uh, on paper, and I pinned it into a window facing south. It gets a lot of light all through the day, and I was expecting the colors all to fade. Actually, I was expecting pretty much everything to fade, but except for the carbon black. I figured the carbon black would hold up very well, and it did. It did not fade. Um, but the Oxford blue is no longer blue. It's kind of a grayish mauve color. The ancient copper is no longer the rich, you know, uh, uh, iron oxide color. Uh, but the walnut did something quite interesting. It actually darkened, <laughs> which is quite interesting. Black Swan, Noodler's Black Swan, you know, um, English Roses, it didn't fade. It darkened up a bit. Um, so I'm going to actually ink this pen up with walnut and do some drawings with it, do some artwork, do some sketching, because I think if it's on a good quality paper and framed properly and hung on a wall, I think it's going to be very durable, you know? No artwork lasts forever. You know, we talk about uh, light fast paints and things like that, but even oil paints change over time. They, they become more transparent as they age and the colors fade. So if you look at a Van Gogh, for instance, it's quite different than what it was originally. The colors have changed dramatically, you know. Um, but so I'm going to do some drawing, and I'm going to do it with walnut. Um, this one here, nice brown, uh, and see how it goes. So that's anyway. That's interesting. I might actually do a, a bit more more color samples. The thing about noodlers is he the the man the person who makes the noodler inks he's, he he likes to tinker he likes to make inks that are have different chemical properties and they're all sort of different some of them are what he calls like tamper proof inks you know designed to uh, you know uh, be hard to erase or hard to wash out you know for uh, signatures and things like that and you know, they're um, forge resistant. So I think those properties also have created inks that are good for art, for drawing, for sketching. So I'm going to find out. <laughs> and I, I might do a bigger, more carefully laid out plan and, and put it in my window. Maybe I'll do all the noodlers I have. Might be interested. I'll, I'll be, I'm interested to see how noodlers react um, all the, and I don't have a huge number of noodlers. I have some, but I, I, I'm going to do that. It, it'll be an interesting experiment. So <clears throat> let's see what we're going to do here. I have two cats circling me, mostly because they probably know I have a bottle of noodlers inks, ink here, and noodler ink is filled to the brim. <laughs> they come in this nice high bottle. And so I'm always worried about, I've never spilled one. I'm always worried about it. And these two uh, chuckleheads are getting kind of active. They're up to something. Uh oh. Anyway, so let's get this started. I'm going to get some paper towel. 
and I'm going to try and get a good fill. There we go. Wipe that off a bit. <laughs> I got the cap on it. The cats are disappointed. <laughs> Wipe that off. And I'm going to use a notebook I often use for sketching, and that is a Baron Fig notebook I have. And it has lovely paper in it, and it's just a nice notebook. So I'm going to save those. Those are our sailors. I'll put them aside for now. I don't really use cartridges that much. I'm more of a converter <laughs> fan. Uh, yeah, so what you end up with is a fairly good sized pen. It's nice thickness. It's a nice length. It's, you know, not a heavy pen. Um, I think it can be posted. It becomes very long when it's posted, <laughs> almost comically. But I'm going to keep posting it probably because I would probably lose this cap <laughs> and my workspace i'm going to be really honest is a total mess at the moment i'm just gonna <laughs> yeah so it, it's not unbalanced even though it's long it's not back heavy or anything like that so so what you get with a a, a fude or fude um bent nib is almost like a brush in some ways. You can get this broad line if you hold it one angle. If you hold it at a different angle, you can get a thinner line. Okay, and as you sketch, you're able to uh, get a nice variation in your drawing line. And, and so on, right? Now, I would not think of this pen as something I would sit down and write a journal entry in. Oops, sorry. But I am going to do a little writing sample. The quick... <laughs> I was just trying a different length, uh, width of line there. You know, it's actually smooth. <laughs> As I'm writing with it, it's smooth. Um, uh, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Hmm. You can write with it. It's not. It's not scratchy. It's um. But because of the shape of the nib and the size of that bend in it, it is a little difficult to write with because you can't really control the line. However, that makes it a good sketch pen, right? If you're willing to experiment and use this for different things. This is just a little... <laughs> this is a, a nice little notebook I have. Oops, and I got ink on it. Ooh, so if I hit it hard, I do get a splatter. <laughs> okay. Good thing it's not Bay State, Bay State Blue, isn't it? Mm. Interesting. And that's Oxford Blue right there. So, yeah, some little drawings I've done over time. Just some weird things, little sketches, little notes. They're not what I'd call actual fine art or anything like that. But it's just, some, you know, ideas for other... Like going to other paintings. Sometimes you just do little thumbnails and that leads to an idea and in and, and a provides you with a solution, right? So, as you can see, you got a nice line. It's going to take me a while to get used to this thing. Hmm. But it's going to be fun, I think, trying this out. I have a couple other sketch pens that I use, different types. Um, I actually have a rotaring art pen that I've had for quite a while. And it does not give you any line variation unless you put a different nib on it. 
but you can put a different nib on it. I don't actually have any other nibs for it. I think I have a fine nib on it. And I use that quite a bit. And it's quite nice. And I use, um, oddly enough, I use my Twisby Echo for drawing quite a bit because I have it inked up with Platinum Carbon Black. And I use that in watercolor paintings and I use that in uh, just for sketching sometimes or if I'm just doing some ideas, trying to thumbnail or you're just, or I'm just trying to uh, come up with some ideas. This is by no means an accomplished drawing. <laughs> and as you can see, it's quite interesting how you can... get some really interesting uh, brush marks. I used to have, at one point, a wooden sketch pen. Um, and it was really interesting. I, I, I don't know if I still have it. I'd, I'd have to go digging around in my storage shelves. Uh, it was almost a... It was made of wood, and it had a, a, a wooden nib. And, you'd, and I had used... Um, Daniel Smith's Walnut Brown, um, which was a great drawing ink. I don't know if you can still get it. It was from a company in uh, Seattle back in the 90s I bought it. But they make watercolors and oil paints, I believe. But I don't know if they still make drawing inks. And they had a really nice brown. But it wasn't what I would call fountain pen friendly. Because I think I ruined a pen using it once <laughs> back in the day. Yeah, so that's just a little sketch. That's kind of fun how that line works. Don't criticize my drawing. I'm just doodling, okay? So anyway, there you have it. The Sailor, uh, the Sailor... Uh, Few, few day is that am i saying that right few day demand man uh in cobalt green anyway if, if you're into drawing and sketching this might actually be something worth looking at worth looking at for you um it takes a converter so you can put different types of fountain pen inks in it uh i wouldn't put say uh an india ink or anything like that or anything like a you know uh Lots of inks that you can use with dip pens. I wouldn't put it in this, but I would use a fountain pen friendly ink. Uh, but there are light, fast, and, and durable fountain pen friendly inks. So do a little research about what you would put in it, and I think you could have some interesting results. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you had a good day. I'm having a great day. Uh, slowly recovering from exhaustion after <laughs> hurricane... Fiona, uh, but it's nice to get back to do some videos, and I'll be doing more, of course. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here, uh, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. And also, uh, if you have any comments about the pen, if you've used it before, how, what do you use it with, things like that. Do you like the pen? Do you not like the pen? Let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.